What are the attributes that you look at someone that is living life without planning? How do you know? The attributes of lack of planning is that you're not the best version of yourself. Is that you have so many abilities that are unfulfilled. So many dreams that are unrealized. Because planning means living by goals. What is a goal? A dream with a deadline. So if things are not dated, they will not come to pass. If you faint in the day of adversity, the problem is not too big. Your strength is small. If you fail mass in Wayek, mass is not difficult. Your mathematical skill is poor. Develop the skill. You don't need to be a genius to learn new skills. Just attend mathematical lessons. You may struggle, but you get it. The moment you have clarity about where you're here, goal setting becomes easier. Let me tell you something about goals. You can set the wrong goals. You can achieve the wrong goals. But whether it's right or wrong, the ability to achieve goals, whether right or wrong, is developed. Don't share your goals with people that will resist you. That's where they are. They are too small. You can have goals bigger than the people around you. You don't share big goals with small people because small people make a lot of trouble. They make trouble with you. Sometimes you lack wisdom when you share your plans in certain platforms. No matter how bold you think you are, you attract war to yourself that is not necessary. The primary way to manage time is to schedule your time and make yourself a slave to your own time. Slave to your own time? Yes. You have to live by schedules. If you don't have schedules, you can't manage time. You can't wake up when you like and sleep when you like. You'll be in trouble. Time. If you miss time, you've missed your destiny. Your time is your life. If you are killing time, you are committing suicide. What you do with time is what you've done with your life. How do you maximize your time? Wow. Powerful question. Hi guys, it's Benzik once again and welcome to another episode of Salah Meditate. Today once again I have a very powerful guest beside me here which I believe some of you won't have known about him already. But if you don't know much about him, I'm going to link the past interviews we have done in the description to his profile so you can read much more about him. And it's no other person than Mr. John C. Enelama. Sir, thank you very much for joining us once again in this episode. Thank you very much, yeah, Benzik. I think we want us to discuss on um, planning and life planning generally. So what, what do you describe or what do you define as planning? And what does it mean to plan your life? Planning is forecasting the future. Planning is anticipating the future. Planning is looking into the future. Planning is anticipating the future. Planning is a way to try to take control of your life by pursuing predetermined objectives. That's planning. And then how do you plan your life? Um, you, you plan your life when you believe that your life can be planned. You acquire the skills for planning and you actually settle down to go through the process of living by predetermined objectives. Thank you. What's the sense of it? Why should people even want to plan in the first place? Uh, first of all, planning is a law. And the law of planning states that if you fail to plan, you have planned to fail. Um, that must be coming from Benjamin Franklin years and years ago. But it's a law. So if you don't plan your life, yeah, and you fail to plan, you have planned to fail. So a primary reason for planning your life is so you live effectively and live a fulfilled life. You, it's difficult, if not nearly impossible, to live a fulfilled life without planning. Yes. Now, you know, this is New Year 2024. Um, most people will come into the year with different plans and all of that and what they're going to achieve for the year. But there's this tendency of people writing down their plans and what they're going to do, exactly what they're going to do. And before you know it, most of the plans or their resolutions rather that they want to do doesn't doesn't go past one month. Why do you think what are the reasons why do you think people fail to keep their new year resolutions or their plan? Yeah. Like, right? yeah. Um uh, uh, first of all, there is a difference between planning your life and new year resolutions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> new year resolutions are like resolutions. I resolve that I will not smoke again. <laughs> you make resolutions, right? But the primary reason resolutions do not work is that it is difficult, 
if not nearly impossible, to live your life in a way that, that is inconsistent with your basic makeup. So when people make resolutions, those resolutions are not in alignment with who they are. Somebody loves to smoke. You say, I will stop smoking. <laughs> you can't stop. You love smoking. <laughs> to stop smoking, you have to hate smoking. So if you smoke and you don't have a hatred for smoking, you can't stop it. You have to hate smoking to stop smoking. So, so people do things according to the way they are or maybe peer pressure. So, for example, um, somebody says, there are two factors involved. Somebody says, I'm going to be a better husband. You're going to be a better husband, but if you have bad qualities, you will not be a better husband because you said, I'm going to be a better husband. To become a better husband, you have to become a different person. Mm. Yes, you have to change from inside out. Being a better husband means you now gain some knowledge that makes you realize, oh, this is what it takes to be a better husband. And it's the pursuit of those values and qualities that makes you a better husband, not the saying of it. Yes, if somebody is a person, let me an example. It's a good example, actually. Um, somebody is a married man. He has a spouse. Maybe he's newly married, first three years of marriage. And maybe when he's coming back from work, he just stops by the bar, hangs out with his friends, and the wife is looking at home. Then comes back, strolls back out maybe late at night, and the wife is tired. Sometimes maybe he come back drunk because he's in the bar with the wrong people. Sometimes maybe he's sitting in the bar womanizing. Because, you know, women gather, they get around something, right? And then the wife is complaining, like, I, I mean, we're, yeah, we're a new couple, you don't come back on time. Then he now says, this 2024, I am going to be a better husband. <laughs> what is going to make you a better husband? The desire to hang out with his friend is still there. And probably he's trying to turn a new leaf. That's why he says he's going to be a better husband in the new year. Yes, I like why I like why he say he's trying to. You don't succeed because you try to. You succeed because you know and because you change. Trying to turn a new leaf does not mean much. When you say, I'm trying to turn a leaf, it means that I want to become a better husband. Yes. But what does it really take to be a better husband? It's not the resolution, I want to be a better husband. It's actually the change from inside out. What makes a what makes a good husband? What makes a man good? Is you have it means that being a good husband becomes a value with you. You know what it means to have a value. It means it becomes one of your highest priorities. It's not just the desire, but a strong desire. And then once you say something is your priority, you start to think about it. What does it take to become a family man? You have to create schedules and say by this time. Between this time and this time, I'm with my family, with my wife. You actually practice those schedules. But the resolution or resolve I want to be is not enough. You have to have the skill. You have to have a change from inside out. You have to have, put a value. You have to make being a husband a value. Be, something becoming a value means that you're being, you are working from inside out. You actually take time to internalize it, to make the mental adjustments, which is the big thing. To say, because you have to define what it means and be willing to pay the price to become that. Because it's what you become, you practice. So in other words, the why people fail to keep their resolutions is because they are not fully resolved, number one reason. They are, they are, that resolution is inconsistent with their basic makeup. Inconsistent, that means basically... That makeup. means that what they are and what they're trying to be are different. Yes, that's really yes, that's the, that's, that's the primary, that's the primary reason. reason. Yes, nobody can behave in a manner. Nobody can consistently behave in a manner that is inconsistent with their own basic makeup. Scripturally, in the Bible, it says you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Don't struggle to see. Just be born again, you will see it. You have to change. The first word Jesus spoke, repent. Change your mindset. Your mindset is a frame, a framework, a, a pair of lenses through which you see the world. Unless the lenses change, the world you see cannot change. To change the world you see, you have to change the mindset through which you are seeing the world. That mindset is what is consistent with who you are. How you reason. How you reason. So I can give you many other examples. It's like money. Let's take money for example. If a person doesn't take time to think about what they think about money, they will always be greedy. They will eat their own. They will eat your own. Because they don't have any values about money. It doesn't mean anything. But if somebody says, how much money do I really need? Do I need to cut corners? I don't want to cut corners. It's a change in their thinking to say, what I have is enough for me. Oh, I have a lot of needs. Yes, I'm going to limit myself to what I have. 
It's a mindset. Mm. I'm not going to eat beyond. I'm not going to spend more, what I do not have. I'm not going to be borrowing money from people and spending the money. When it's time to pay back, I pretend as if I didn't borrow money. It's a mindset. It means you're under pressure. You're living above your means. You're living beyond your means. You're paying for things you really cannot afford. But it's who you are. It's a mindset. If you change to say, I'm content with who I am. This is how much I'm, I'm earning. I'd like to earn more. But for now, this is where I am. I'm content. I'm going to plan my life according to where I am, what I have. It's not enough. That, that means you're different. So, when, so, so resolutions, what ties it to life planning? Is that when you plan your life, when the year is ending, you don't need new resolutions. You just carry on. Because you're following a plan. We have entered 2020. Nothing has changed in my life. I did No. What I was doing as the year was ending, I'm following a plan. I have a daily plan I follow. That plan didn't change because I entered a new year. No, 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 no. And that plan is not just daily. That daily plan is tying me to a long-term plan. Five time things. So all I did was just keep on going. I didn't even say this year, this year. I do have goals. I do have agendas. But because I have taken time to think through what kind of a person, the goals, the, how do I put this? I just entered 2024, but what I'm supposed to do in 2024 was agreed in 2023. The first major assignment I have in 2024 is that we're hosting a conference, work with other people, leading a conference. Is That plan is more than a year old. We're just moving with that plan. When I got to this, I didn't, I, as the year was ending, I didn't say, oh my God, what should I do in 2024? I know what I'm supposed to do in 2024 because it was planned in 2023 with the help of God. But I sat down and wrote it on paper. So I just entered the year. I keep running. Before I stop to say, what should I do? There's too much to do. What are the attributes that you look at someone that is living life without planning? How do you know? What are the attributes of this person that lives life? Uh, so let's, let's, there's an example in the Bible. Samson, mm. he didn't plan his life. So the day he died, he killed more people on that day now, the days of his life. Uh, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be because uh, uh, he prayed for God to give him that power to do that? To do that? Uh, on that day he died. He could have prayed for the power. It could have been spread throughout his life. Every day could have added value. Look at Joseph. He lived a long and prosperous life. So the attributes of an unplanned life is that you don't live out your potential. Because part of planning is having a plan how to develop who you are, your potential. The attributes of lack of planning is that you're not the best version of yourself. Mm. Is that you have so many abilities that are unfulfilled. So many dreams that are unrealized. Because planning means living by goals. Goal, what is a goal? A dream with a deadline. Mm. So if things are not dated, they will not come to pass. Somebody that says, one day I'll go to America, may never go. Somebody says, I'm going to America June 2024. He might not know how, but that date changes everything. Mm. Even the universe works for you when you have a date. Yeah, so when you say, what are the attributes of lack of planning? There are so many. You run around a lot. Helter skelter. Mm -hmm. It means that you wake up, you don't have an agenda for the day. Mm -hmm. So every phone call is important. Mm -hmm. Even those using you to achieve your own purpose is very important. Every meeting is important. On the same level of important. Every person you meet, same level of important. Because you have no plan. Mm -hmm. But if you say, oh, I'm going to Enugu tomorrow. You wake up, somebody now calls you in the morning. Eh, hey, there's a meeting in Benin. It's not your business. You're going to Enugu. Mm -hmm. Somebody now calls you on the way. Hey, by the way, we have, there's party. There's free food. It's not your business. They're going to Enugu. Someone that calls you, hey, hey, you're going to Enugu. That just going to Enugu changes everything. It makes decision making. Somebody says, eh, can you stop by? Mm -hmm. You don't need to be a genius to know that you don't need to stop by. Because stopping by means you're no longer going to Enugu. It changes everything. And meanwhile, so the question says, but what about, how do you know the right thing to go to Enugu? Yeah. No, any plan is better than no plan. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when somebody, so watch this. This is too, it's interesting as far as I'm concerned. For many years, mm. I observed people who I thought were very effective. I, I didn't know why. You know what is effective? Mm. They get things done. Yes. They have results. Yes. You do something with them, they produce a result. I'm like, how? How can that be? Mm. They didn't seem to know what they're doing, where they're saying, where they're going. Mm. I, just, I thought it was impossible to look into the future. They people say, it's not possible to plan the future. Mm. <laughs> they're speaking according to where they are. What is Even some people say that planning is not spiritual. Mm. If you're spiritual, uh, you can't know, you, you, you can't just have a plan or whatever it is. 
Even God has a strategic calendar. The Bible says that Jesus was the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the earth. The reason Jesus could finish his life assembly at a three plus was it was planned. Even going to Jerusalem was, in a, was an agenda. A virgin shall be with child was planned. <clears throat> Nothing was accidental. So, what is planning there for, if you ask me? Forecasting the future. But to do that, you have to adjust your thinking. If your thinking is not possible, it's not possible for you. If your thinking is possible, it's possible. What, what adjustment do you make? That God made man to be like him. And the ability to plan is a God quality. And he put it in mankind. Man can plan. Someone said something about uh, planning that what's that plan writing down anything or goals like you mentioned mm -hmm. the planning is about writing goals I write down any goals or plans that this is that is a wasted effort because you may be putting down what's the essence of putting down something when the world is changing like in the, in the speed of light you may be putting down something on a plan that you want to do and before you know it the, the, the change of the, the change that's happening with in the world will make what you're writing become obsolete within a, within, within a twinkle of an eye let's just stand up and get things going rather than putting down anything that you're writing or you're planning What's the point of planning something when you might wake up the next morning and things have changed? First of all, whatever is not written down is abstract. It's only when things are written down they become concrete. Let me tell you, the day I sat down, I used to feel overwhelmed with life. Once in a while, but there were seasons like that. I didn't understand why. Then I kept studying and then I understood why. When you sit down and write all you need to do, which you are yet to do, just write them on paper and start to prioritize them. Before you even start doing them, your life will change. You see calmness. The reason people are overwhelmed, they have so much to do that is not documented. They don't even know what all of it. Don't the they don't know the next thing. They just know there's so much to do. I need to, I need to clean my room. I need to wash my car. I need to attend the meeting. I need to balance my books. I need to write a book. I need to be a father. I need to be an uncle. I need to be a cousin. I need to go to London. I need to start to build. All these things are inside one person. I'm somebody's husband. I'm somebody's uncle. I'm somebody's brother. I'm somebody. Do you understand? And then you have all these things to do. You better want. And then you have so many deadlines. You need to submit this, submit that. But what changed me? Wow. One day I understood. I sat down. I wrote everything down. I started to arrange them. Before I even started to do, my life changed. Because from that point on was... I knew what I needed to do. I didn't even know how yet and when. But the fact that it's documented mm. made it concrete, no longer abstract. Wow. So, if you do not know that man was given enormous capacity and ability by God, wow, you've not started to live. You're capable of so much more. But you need skills. One of those skills is planning. The ability to sit down and think into the future with the help of God. <laughs> what we may not understand is that, that even though the ways of God are far above the ways of man and the thoughts of God are higher than the thoughts of man, it is possible for man to have the thoughts of God. Wow. So now what are the models of planning? So many models of planning. Um, I don't know them all, but I've worked a few. But I'll tell you, the model of planning, there are so many models. Um, because models of planning are tied to how to find your purpose. Because planning is about purpose. Now, ma many models of planning people use are based on what I call motivation. You know, like, I, I would sit down, I would do X, Y, Z. But let me mention two or three models. M model one is you can divide your life into segments and set targets for those segments. What are my segments? Areas of life. So you can work with what are your financial plans, what are your physical plans, what are your spiritual plans, what are your social plans, how do you want to contribute to society, um, and then you can set goals along all those plans. You can also talk about uh, maybe what contributions you want to make. That's what I call shape. Shape is by Rick Warren. He talks about spiritual gifts, talks about um, your heart, talks about your ability, talks about your personality and experience. So this is a way to discover who you are. I call it a model of planning. Then if you 
No, if you are conversing with good to great, for example, it talks about how can a person find a sweet spot in life? Your sweet spot in life. Um, so it talks about the intersection between three main things, you know, your engine, um, your what you can be the best in the world at, um, and then what it might be your, which is your hedgehog, the, your economic engine, and one other circle. And then the, 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 the center of it is your sweet spot. It's a model. It's a model because why I like the model is that it says that how you know what God is calling you to do with your life is what you can be the best at potential in the world. It, okay? So you can use that to plan. Then you have um, examples. And one of the best planning models is, is by Benjamin Franklin. Because Benjamin Franklin was a very accomplished American. And Benjamin Franklin also um, developed a time management system that, uh, that was built on values. He actually, it was built on values that allowed him to plan his life. Because one of the reasons why he was so accomplished was that his model of planning is, was values-based. He believed that your values will determine your, 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 your goal, your place in life. What Benjamin Franklin took time to develop 13 virtues. He called them virtues. But these virtues it's are values. And he said, I wanted to aspire to become morally perfect by working on these things. And he developed a model to work on them in a way that he could cover them in a year. Because there were 13 of them, 15 weeks in a year. So he could work on them, maybe each of them for four months and so on and so forth. But where I'm going with this is that his model, which is also built like a pyramid, I, um, the productivity pyramid, because it was in this, in this course of researching that I stumbled on product, productivity pyramid. I didn't even know where it came from. But, but Benjamin Franklin, um, one of the people um, who even modified his model of planning and even made it even more acceptable with Sonia Delager, for example. And it's one of the most powerful models of planning. Why? The, the major difference between Benjamin Franklin's model of planning and every other model that exists is the fact that it's values-based. Values are intrinsic. It means that at the bottom of the pyramid are your main values for living. The reason why you do what you do. So, so, yeah, so the reason resolutions mm. do not work is that it's not inwardly motivated. People, people are trying to become what they are really not aspiring to be from their inside. Okay. They are not asking the question, why do you want to stop smoking? Mm. It's killing you. If you focus on that and say, oh, living long mm. is a value. Stop, stopping smoking is easier. Mm. Yes, because you have a reason. You have a reason that the doctor said this will kill you. Mm. I connect life planning to purpose. So, models of finding purpose I also call them models of planning because planning is done in order to help a person fulfill their life purpose. Mm. Therefore, whatever models we use or can be used in finding purpose, I call them models of planning. So I, so I mentioned three. So I said shape is an acronym by recording. Mm. And it says that the way to find a purpose, consider your shape. S stands for spiritual gifts. H for your heart, your passion. A for ability. P for your personality, E for your experience. So that's a way to find your purpose. It's a model. It's also a model for life planning because you can't use it to apply your life. Then I said that the good to great model by Jim Collins says that a person in trying to find what they as an organization should focus on should think about three circles. Those circles, you consider your economic engine. You also consider what might call your hedgehog concept. What are you good at? And then, um, I keep forgetting the third one, but what it means is that the most important thing is that Jim Collins st states that, look, in order to find what you should focus your energy at, or as an individual, what God has called you to do, you have to say, what potentially can I be the best in the world at? Very powerful. No, now, if someone is at a confused stage right now and a person doesn't have any plan for what to start doing or thinking of which way to set his, his or her life aright, sure. what can the person start doing to plan his life? 
and prep life for the future. Well, the starting point is not planning. The starting point is understanding life itself. Where are you? Who are you? You have to ask some basic questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? Why am I in, if you are in Nigeria, why am I in Nigeria? You have to ask those fundamental questions. Because it's, it's in trying to answer them, you start to make meaning out of life. The turning point is not, you can't plan without purpose. You can't plan without understanding. You are going to make a mess of the planning process. Who are you? Why are you here? Where were you born? What are you called to do with your life? What, do you understand time? Do you understand your timeline? That you have a beginning, you have an end. Do you know that you're going to expire one day? What do you plan to achieve with your life? That's the starting point. So anybody in a confused state that does not know what to do should start by taking a step back and going on a personal retreat to ask some basic and fundamental questions like, who am I? Where did I come from? What was I born in Ukraine? What was I born in Nigeria? What was I born in the United Kingdom? Don't just be in a hurry. I want to travel, Japan, change my, get a new passport. New passport where? Does God make mistakes? God just made a mistake and just gave you Nigerian citizenship. God is not a man that you should make mistakes. No, sure. So the, the, the first stage is understanding where you are first of all. Understanding who you, are, who you are, where you are, where you are going, where would you like to go, what you want to do with your life. At the end of your life, what would you like to remember for? You have to start with these fundamental questions. Once this question is clear, before the person can start putting down a plan. Is the, those questions, as you ask them and answer them, mm. the planning process has started. Because, because planning is really saying, how can I make the most of my life on earth? How do I maximize my life? It's life planning. How can I make the most of my life? To make the most of my life, you have to say, what do I have? What are your gifts? What are your talents? What are your abilities? What are your resources? Visible, invisible. What is it that God has called you to do? There are many questions involved. I have questions I call the same movement question. Maybe I've mentioned them to you. You know what I'm saying? The question the person has to answer the question of purpose. Now there are many people that after even do they put down their plans and what they are going to do and they start off with a plan and all of that. It gets to a point or it gets to a time where they they set down the plan. So they are not able to accomplish all they put down. What do you think are the reasons why people don't end up fulfilling or accomplishing what they wrote written down or the plans for their life? Because they are not yet the person that can fulfill the plan. There's a gap between who they are and what they're trying to do. How? There are many things I knew 20 years ago I could not do. But I do them effortlessly today because I'm different. I'm a different version of myself. I've, I've, God has made investments in me. I've made investments in myself. I've gone to school, attended seminars. What you're asking is like saying, some people will want to drive. They have a strong desire to drive, but they can't drive. Yes, they can't drive because they've not learned how to drive. You can be four years and be looking at a car. Watch people drive. And you love it so much. You become seven, you're looking at it. But you cannot drive until you learn how to drive. When you learn how to drive, driving is longer a mystery. Before you learn, it's a mystery. So the reason people have all kinds of plans and they're not able to fulfill them, there's a major gap between who they are and what they're trying to do. That's where countries fail. Some people become leader, president. They're not prepared. They are just led by ambition. They are just ambitious. People who prepare for the roles they play in life before they play the role, they produce better results. Somebody wants to be a leader of a country. You got, you got to, go to go to school. Yeah. What does it take to lead a country? How do you deal with resources? There are questions you have asked and you answer. Well, it, look, if you are ill prepared, even if they give you the best advisors, you don't know how to use them. And then if you are ill prepared, you use the wrong people as advisors too. You appoint wrong leaders. Do you know how you appoint them? Friendship, relationship. Who who pays? Who who bargains the highest? Who you like the face? You are here prepared leader. Leadership is about results. So the point I'm making is that that's a big gap. So when you say people have all kinds of plans, but who are they? Who are you? Who are you? Do you know that to do something, you have to be something. What if someone wants to do something actually but doesn't have the capacity to do it but because he cannot do but it? But capacity is developed. Capacity mm. is developed. Capacity is a, that's that's a simple statement, but it's very profound. Capacity is developed. To drive a car, you develop capacity. To become a professor, you develop capacity. To become a doctor, you develop capacity. 
There's nothing you cannot develop. Capacity is developed. If there is a gap, if you faint in the day of adversity, mm. the problem is not too big. Your strength is small. If you failed mass in Wayek, mass is not difficult. Your mathematical skill is poor. Mm. Develop the skill. You don't need to be a genius to learn new skills. Mm. Just attend mathematical lessons. You may struggle, but you get it. When I was in secondary school, I still remember. You know, when the new concepts are taught in mass class, some people just get it like that. Because they have an argument for mass. Some people will say, you know, like they're confused. What is that? But I still remember that some of the people that come and say, what did you do? They will learn it. Once they get it, they even do better than those who first got the concept in class. Because once they get it, they don't lose it. But the speed of getting it is not the measure of success. It's whether you grasp it enough that under pressure in the exam condition, you're able to deliver on it. So capacity is developed. The Bible says, Count it joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith develops capacity. But let patience, which is pressures of life, have a perfect or completed work that may be complete and entire, lacking nothing. Some pressures could just be developing you in capacity. Not some pressures. God allows pressures in this life to develop capacity in human beings. Wow. Listen. The reason people are weak is that they're running from pressure. The reason people are strong is that they went through pressure. Mm. Yes. Wow. What is the correlation between timing and planning? You need time to plan. And plan needs time to be executed. You can't plan without time. You can't execute without time. Time is a controlling factor. Time is a limiting factor. Planning is about looking into the future. The reason we plan is to make the most of our timeline. Between time, between your birth mm. and your death is your timeline. Planning is saying between death and between birth and death, mm. I want to maximize my life. So timing is central to planning. Planning is actually controlling time. It's a measure, a way to control your time so you can make the most of your time. Wow. So now when it comes to uh, people planning for their time and people having value for time, what does it mean when someone doesn't have value for his time? When someone is doing something, what does it mean the person doesn't have value for their time? My God. Can I say something to you? The most important resource you have as a person is your time. More valuable than your money. More valuable than money. Yes, because if you lose body, you can get body back. If you lose time, you can't get it back. The only way people may gain time is to accelerate their lifestyle, mm. to live faster, and to do things faster. But you can't get the time you've lost. Once you've lost time, it's irretrievable. Mm. So listen, anybody that, once you understand time, mm. you start to live with a sense of urgency. Sense of urgency. Yes. People that go late, that you go late to work, mm. you go late to meetings, mm. There are some, a number of factors. One, sometimes they are distracted, and I'll explain that. Sometimes um, they don't understand how time works. But the fundamental reason is that they do not understand time. Mm. When you go late, this morning we had a meeting by 11, 11 a.m. I have a fellowship I attend, 8 to 10. If I go to that fellowship, I can't guarantee I'll be here by 11. Mm. Yes, but I want to go. But I could not go. Because not only am I attending the meeting by 11, I'm a leader, a coordinator. I'm part of the team that must make sure the meeting happens. So people, we have a board. Mm. They are not making the meeting happen. They are just showing up. So they can, my, they, they can go to that meeting and come. Mm. I can't go to the meeting. We have to set up. So once I woke up, the only agenda I had this morning is set up this place. I didn't do anything else. Mm. When I was not as wise, I would have added many things to my table. I would go here. Go here. And then I'll be wondering, why am I late? You're late because you're distracted. When you go where you're not supposed to go, you're distracted. Mm -hmm. You stop where you're not supposed to stop, you're distracted. You take a call. Where you're not supposed to take the call, you're distracted. Even if, ah, this call is so important. The call is important, but uh, there's a time for everything. Mm -hmm. So, when the moment I understood time, there's a clock ticking within me. What's, what does it mean to understand time? It means to understand the scarcity of time. That in this life, everything you know and admire was produced with the help of time. Mm. 
And that, that time itself, because of that, time is controlling. But time is also limited. Because without time, you can't do much. Therefore, if you mismanage time, you're mismanaging your life. Your, most, your scarcest resource is time. Your most important resource is time. Time is something you cannot give away. You, you should dash people money and keep your time. How do you maximize your time? Wow. Powerful question. The way to maximize time is by planning. How do you, what does it mean to plan? First, wow, how do you explain this? This, for me, is a game changer. It changed my life forever. I can't say I'm the best person in the world. There's nothing like that. But I can tell you, I get value out of time I've never gotten before. So, let me break it down. If you want to maximize your time, you have to protect your time and know that that's all you have. You have to protect your time. You have to use your time for doing only those things that are important for the reason why you were created. You can't use it, you can't be frivolous with time. So let me tell you, let me share my personal way how I maximize my time. <laughs> Is that I start my day with meeting with God every day. Once I meet with God, I meet with myself. Once I've done that, the day is before me. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. Before, when I didn't do that, I'm racing for time. I don't have time. The moment I did that, and then I understood that I'm in control of time with the help of God. You know what it means to be in control? It means that you shouldn't go to a meeting because they drag you to the meeting. Don't be in a hurry to consent to anything. Somebody calls you, can we move by two? You're in charge. You have to say, you have to pause by two. Two o'clock. Mm. Mm. Do you need to meet by two? Mm. Then they say yes. The moment you say yes, you're trapped. You must honor it. Yes. Even if you do honor it, the body mm. is on you. Mm. If it's time to go, you will sleep with that body that night. I promise somebody I didn't do it. Mm. Yes, but so don't mean I've made a mistake many times. We just finished a conference in Patakot. Spiritual leaders, powerful. I wanted to be there by all means. I even paid for room. For the whole conference, Sunday to Saturday. But when I looked at my schedule, mm. I have a conference at the end of January into February. The planning is already on. Do you know something? Do you know I could not afford the time to go and sit down in the conference? Uh -huh. I could not. I paid for the room. I didn't ask my money back. I took it as my donation to the conference. I only was able to pass through one day. While I'm there, my system is racing. You cannot stay here more than a few hours. I was there for barely two hours. Why? I boarded a flight to Lagos. I have an assignment. I'm already activated. I can. I said, my God, what about if 20 years ago I didn't come here, learn what I can learn, mm. there'll be a gap in my life. Mm. So you maximize your time by realizing and adjusting your thinking. You're in charge of your own time. Nobody can force you to do anything. Now, if you're a paid employee, if you organize yourself, even the people you report to will know you organize. Because they can't drag you to meetings because it will affect the results they're expecting from you too. Mm. You say you can say, sir, if I go to this meeting, that deadline of tomorrow, I won't meet. Mm. But if you're not organized, they drag you and they look like a poor performer. Mm. Because the time you're supposed to use to produce the result they wanted, yeah, they, they drag you out of it. And it, didn't, it didn't resist. Mm. It didn't resist. You're just a good man. What of your resistance now makes you look like you're not doing what? You're not obedient, you're not obedient. So what is the worst case scenario? They'll fire you. Yes. Who will employ you? They're, they're competitor. They will be seeing you performing. They will know they lost somebody. If you are very good at what you do, mm. somebody says, uh, I don't like you. Let them fire you now. Who's going to employ you? The competitor, they will know that they lost something. If you are good, mm. you are good. Mm. You are good. Don't be afraid of those kind of things. Don't be arrogant. But just be good. When you are good, every place you go, you open your mouth, you are good. Nothing to fear. Now, goal setting is very crucial for achieving plans. How do you go about setting clear and achievable plans or goals for yourself? That's very, very interesting. Very good question. Goal setting is a skill. You only get better at it by practice, like every other skill. But the clearer you are about life, the clearer your goals will be. The clearer you are about life. Paul said, Paul was an apostle. He said, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. That's King James Version of the Bible. 
Do you know how the living translation puts it? It said, my life on earth is worth nothing unless I use it for fulfilling the purpose for which I was created. The moment you have clarity about why you're here, goal setting becomes easier. So let me give you an example. <laughs> I've been a Christian for a long time. But what that meant is that I kept asking, what am I supposed to do with my life? Then I understood. Then I even went for that. What am I supposed to do? Then I realized, oh, God wanted me to do certain things. The moment the clearer I became about those things, the easier it was supposed to know what my goals in life should be. What it means is that I don't know every place I'll be in 2024, but I am not praying for what to do in 2024. It's clear. I'm not perfect. Go to the nations. Work with pastors. Do work, do missions. So the question is that, what is my capacity? Where can I go to this year? And I present them. There's clarity. I can see the end of the year by the grace of God. I'm not confused this January what to do. I have a program. We have a program in February. All of January is for February. I don't understand. Very powerful. It's very life changing. Life changing. Go ahead. So now you talk about it now, but the thing is, people want to achieve their goals. Yes. The clear things that you need to do that can set you on the path of achieving those plans you are written. Because it's one thing to write those plans, it's another thing to achieve them. People just sit down and say, okay, I have my goals, or I have my plans, or I have my mission, my purpose. And then they start scribbling them down what they want. So, so you're wanting to write those plans, and nothing to achieve them. What are they? Those are, those are great questions. That one can begin so, yes. Those are great questions. But let me say this. That the ability to achieve goals is an ability that is developed. It is developed by developing your capacity to live life itself. You need clarity about life. Why are you here? But not only do you need clarity, you need to develop your capacity to handle the adversities and vagaries of life. For many years, once I'm doing something, I run into trouble, I give up. I may call it many names, may even become a philosopher mm. and be writing, saying a lot of things, but you give up. Mm. That <laughs> giving up is lack of capacity. Mm. Oh, yes. So the number one reason people are not doing well, they give up. They, don't, they have not developed the capacity to keep on going, even when they go in this stuff. Mm. Some people start something, people are resisting them, gossiping about them, telling lies about them. They give up. You don't give up. You stay the course. But staying the course is an ability that is developed. The way to develop the ability to stay the course is to go through pressure and you didn't give up. Mm. By the time you come out at the other side of pressure, you're different. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, let me tell you something about goals. Mm. You can set the wrong goals. Yeah. Mm. That's not that okay? Thing. You can achieve the wrong goals. But whether it's right or wrong, the ability to achieve goals, whether right or wrong, is developed. Why I say wrong goals is that you can say, oh, actually, I, I got to the top of the ladder and found out it's leaning on the wrong wall. Mm. Eh? That means that, oh, why did I have to work so hard to do this? Was it really important? Mm. But that, even that one, I can help you to deal with that. But I'm saying whether the goal is right, the goal is wrong, you can achieve no goal except you're prepared. Mm. So focus your energy in developing capacity. Invest in yourself. The reason Jesus could do what he did was that Jesus spent a great deal of time in prayer and developed himself. That's true. A great one before the day. He went out and prayed so that he was, before he chose his leaders, he went to the mountain and prayed all night and came down. He had strength, had capacity. Many people are weak. The smallest pressure pushes them down. Mm. The, people's gossip. The fact that people rejected them, mm. told lies about them. Mm. Can I say something to you? Do you see the, the war in Gaza? Yes. The Hamas Israeli, Israeli war, yes. right? Mm. I don't, I'm not into the philosophy or the politics. There's so much I don't know. Mm. But I love the swiftness with which Israel responded. Mm. Many countries don't have that capacity. That's true. Come back to Nigeria. Come back to Africa. The plants are Look at all the things that have happened. People have said things. We'll do this. We'll bomb this. Mm. We didn't bomb anybody. Nothing. They lack the capacity. They say it's approval. Yes, but why do you talk if you have no approval? I'm saying that this man, mm. 
decidedly decided. We're not making stop, stop, stop. Mm. He said, No, when I'm done, you will not I'm exist. Yes. Now, morally, we can debate it. Mm. But that ability to respond swiftly mm -hmm. is an evidence of strength developed not before the time. The plan. Yes, that's called plan. Long period. Yes. It means that they have been set and ready for any of Oh, any of such what happened? Policy. You guys, there were lapses in your security. Uh, yes. But could you respond? Could you respond? Can you respond to life? That's true. Do you respond to life? That is it. Mm. So, so you, you, we need to understand that when I say planning, it's not like child's play. Mm. It's not like just scribble things on paper and run your own life. People might even say, how do you know it's the will of God? Mm. How do you know it's not the will of God? Can you write a 50 years plan today? Why not? You may not be 100% accurate, but any plan is better than no plan. But the accuracy of your planning depends on your level of preparedness and preparations and the clarity of your thought life. Wow. Yes. The accuracy of your planning depends on your level of preparation and preparedness and the clarity of your thought. This is powerful. Wow. Wow. Clarity. You know this clarity. Hmm. Many people are distracted. They don't know why they're here. My friend, there's so much I don't know, but I know why I'm here. Mm. I'm not distracted. You don't need to join every meeting. Mm. You don't need to comment everywhere. Don't be distracted by social media. Don't let people come on Facebook and be taking pictures of them eating, hiking. They have more problems that are telling you. Don't let that distract. That's a distraction. Focus on your focus. Stay on the path of focus. Why are you here? I don't have all the answers. I'm here to make my own contribution. Nothing will deter me from that. How do you balance your plans with seriousness or doing what, is, doing what you know you need to do and time for, you know, they say in, a, in all works without play makes, makes, makes jack the dog work. So how do you prioritize your time to ensure that there are time for pleasure, there are time for rest, there are time for making sure you're doing what you need to do? You've, you've, you've answered it now. There is time for, there is time for, that's the answer. That means you know there is time for pleasure. Eh, there's time to, to sleep. Look, when you plan well, for a 4 p.m., people can be in traffic. You just lie on your bed and be sleeping there. <laughs> because it's time to sleep. And if you understand, this Christmas, I've not done it. I mean, it will be the first time, but I didn't start like that. I knew that family is a value. Family is a value. I was determined by planning, prayerful planning, to spend Christmas with the family. What did it mean? I was in Nigeria. By 16th, by 17th, I'm on the plane. I landed on the 18th, 19th, went on vacation till Christmas Day. 26th, I'm on the plane back to Nigeria. I could never do that without planning. But why? So we said, why? If you're going to come back, why not stay? I said, I will delete the program, but I will not delete my family. How did I know that? Values and planning. If it's before, I could make an excuse and say, the cost of ticket, eh, I will save money. No, you didn't save money. You lost family. I lost my family. If I say I'm in Nigeria on the 17th, if I go to America and come back to Nigeria on the 26th, I'm wasting money. I have no value for my family. There's no money I paid that was more valuable than the time I spent with my family. You don't watch your children grow on TV or video. If you missed it, you have missed it. So guess what? What made the difference? Mindset. The first shift is that Family is a value. God put us together in one family by providence. You will not always be together in one place. There's a time will come that to come together is thousands of dollars. Mm. So now that it's possible, do it. Mm. It's planning. We put in a plan. Mm. We planned it. It worked out by the grace of God. Right. So the point I'm making now is that can, somebody says, can you plan the next 50 years? Yes. Mm. Depending on your level of preparation, preparedness, and the clarity of your thinking. Can you think clearly into 50 years? Most people cannot. Mm -hmm. they are too, they are too, their life is too cluttered, too cluttered to think for 10 days. But you, yeah, too cluttered. They can't think about the next 10 days. They are too cluttered. They, they have all resolved issues. They are quarreling with their father. They are quarreling with their mother. That's clutteredness. That's true. They are quarreling. They don't understand. Not, I'm not perfect. But if you understand, you may disagree. But you don't worry. You don't go to your bed at night thinking about what they told you. You are wasting your life. Mm -hmm. Discard it. Move forward. Yes, clarity. By the way, even God will download it for you. 
Yes. What if someone, uh, you have a particular timing in your board that your timing says at four o'clock you should be writing. And when at four o'clock something else comes up that looks as though it's more important than that writing, should you switch? <laughs> you have answered it again. More important. You do the more important now. <laughs> okay. Yes, because you are flexible. Okay, uh, hey, that can come. Oh, you must time. be flexible. If I in planning, you are taught, give room. Don't plan all your time. Plan only sixty percent. Leave forty percent for flexibility. Yes. Okay. okay. You are not perfect. You are not God. Yeah, you are only trying to put some structure to your life, mm. so you can make the most of life. Yes. Now, with the mirror goals in mind, how do you prioritize objectives to ensure you are focusing? on what needs to be focused on. How do you prioritize your objectives and the things you need to do to ensure that you are putting your focus on what is actually what should your focus should be on? It's a very excellent question. The answer is you need to take time to determine what's important to you. You need to take time to determine what you are on this earth to do. That focuses you and prioritizes your life. Can I give you an example of that? Yeah, sure. God has called me to travel as a missionary. Missionary means messenger to his body. That's my calling in life. Eh, I don't think I can go to Jago and I'll be selling cars. It doesn't matter how much I'm doing the body. I'm a missionary. It changes the question. It changes everything. Mm. Even changes who you marry. You can't marry a person who does not allow you to travel. You say, how will you know that? Oh, there are many ways to know. Because what did you discuss before you married? <laughs> yes. Because if you know, you say, oh, by the way, uh, this is what I think I'll be doing based on what I know. Say, oh, no, no, no. Hey, no, 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 no. That's, that marriage will not work. Yeah. So, do you know I travel? My wife has never stopped me from traveling. There's always alignment. Sometimes I've traveled a lot, but God even created it in a way that our life, we are still aligned. Even though I'm going this way, she's going this way, we're still aligned. Because it's only a season. I will still come back together. So, knowing what you're called to do will prioritize your life and make this year make it much easier. Now, failures are part of life. How do you failures. Go, yes, failures. Yes. Now, how do you go about ensuring that? How do you approach failure from the point of, let's say you have, you're trying to accomplish a particular thing or plans and then you encounter setback or you fail? How do you go about ensuring that within those failures, you still try to bounce back to ensure you forge ahead of you? You know, that's what they call vocabulary, right? Which is the English language. So, it depends. so you have to say, what's my vocabulary? So in my vocabulary, there's no failure. Mm. There, in, in my vocabulary, I have setback. I have things that have not worked. <laughs> but I don't have failure. Failure sounds final. I failed. I have never failed. I did things that didn't work. I didn't fail. Why? There's nothing that has ever happened to me that I didn't grow through and learn from. Nothing. When many years ago, 20 something years ago, 24 years ago, or 22 years ago, we were starting a church and I went to market with somebody who was a pastor. I don't even remember the person now. But in the market, the people that were selling kept whispering. I didn't understand them. The next day, I went back to market. They said, ah, sir, that person you brought, we cheated market over, but he cheated, he cheated you more than us. I said, how? Say yeah, that he's putting his own price on this. I said, I don't know. But that changed me. I learned something that you can come to market with somebody and they can cheat you. It changed my, it made me wiser. Did I fail? No. Have I ever written an exam and I had to write it more than, yes. What happened? It changed me. Here's where I'm going with this. God uses pressure to make us, not to buy us. He will allow pressure in your life that you become. So, there are setbacks, things that didn't work. There are no failures. Failure is final. You did something. You started a business. The business didn't work. Has not worked. Does not mean it will not work. So, don't say I failed. Say I'm learning. You say, what have you learned? They asked Thomas Edison. He conducted on his spirit so many times. What are you doing? He says, I have Learned how many ways it does not work. Mm. I only need it to work for one way, that's it. Okay, now when it comes to writing goals and plans, people try to t think of accountability partner. Do you think it's necessary or important to have someone that you are accountable to when it comes to your goals or plans for life so that you can be able to share personality to ensure that everyone is on track 
would in your goals on that, on that plan? It's a great question. Zig Ziglar, some years ago, gave an answer. He says that your grow, grow up goals that look ambitious, keep it to yourself. Mm. Because if they make people be fighting you, <laughs> wow. if you say to somebody, I want to be the president of Nigeria, mm. they can start fighting you. <laughs> From now. Yes. But if you tell somebody, uh, uh, you're, you say, share your give up goal. Say somebody, I want to stop smoking, help me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, give up goal. You're giving up something. Mm. But go up. I want to be the richest. But whatever it is, if you're going up with it, uh. it can create jealousy. Mm. So keep it to yourself. Now, that's one dimension. The other dimension is that even sharing goals depends on who you're sharing it with. Mm. Does the person have the maturity? Are they close the enough? Capacity. Yes. You can't be, you have to, one of the big lessons I've learned in life is that mindset is a big deal. When a person opens their mouth and talk, or they talk, mm. including yourself, mm. you locate where you are when you open your mouth. When somebody says, that's not possible, that's where they are. It doesn't mean it's not possible. <laughs> so don't be struggling and arguing with somebody that says something is not possible. Mm. You're wasting your time. You say, you say it's not possible, you say it's true. Be going. Mm. But say to yourself, it is possible. possible. But don't stay there and be arguing with him. So don't share your goals with people that will resist you. Mm. That's where they are. They are too small. You can have goals bigger than the people around you. You don't share big goals with small people because small people make a lot of trouble. They'll make trouble with you. Wow. So keep your big goals to yourself. But you know you can share your big goals with people that are bigger than you. When they, when they, yes. I say, you, know, you could. You don't need okay, to. You don't need you, to. What I'm saying is that, look, somebody says, um, I want to build a house. Mm. Somebody has five houses. Yeah, I want to build a house. They're built now. Uh, when you, if you have number one, I've done number five. Mm. It doesn't mean that you can share with everybody. But what I'm try, try, what, the point I'm trying to make is that be mindful who you're sharing your plans with. However, share the plans that challenge you with people. And the ones that look ambitious, keep it to yourself so you don't, you don't attract fight. Okay. There are plans that are ambitious that make you, people say your head is too big. Yeah. Don't share that with people because they may fight you. Even your, your closest people can fight you. It's true. Who do you think you are? <laughs> just do us just be living your life the one that can they can hold you can say I, I, I want to pray four times a day mm. share that plan so that people say have you prayed yeah. it's better for you than to say uh, <laughs> I want to relocate to London people say who do you think you are yeah but some people will say it's it, uh, where it's important maybe when you share it because I've heard someone say uh, someone will say on, on, on TV or will say that when you have some goals and your plans and you're able to open your mouth and share it to the world, you hold yourself accountable because the world are looking at you based on your words and that, and that will make you try to ensure that you don't feel in That is true. Of what you share. That is true. But my life experience tells me mm. that sometimes you lack wisdom when you share your plans in certain platforms. No matter how bold you think you are, you attract war to yourself that is not necessary. Do you know that the devil is an entity? It doesn't know everything. Is when you open your mouth, you even inform the devil. And he starts making plans to derail you. Yeah, life is spiritual. Now, when it comes to time management, it's a challenge for many. How can, how can we start to manage the time to ensure that progress is made towards every goal the, that is done? The primary way to manage your time. There are many things you do to manage time. The primary way to manage time is to schedule your time and make yourself a slave to your own time. To your own time. Yes, you have to live by schedules. If you don't have schedules, you can't manage time. You can't wake up when you like and sleep when you like. You'll be in trouble. When do you go to bed? You know, no matter where I am in the world, by 10 o'clock I sleep off because by far up. So, even without announcing it, if you are talking to me by 10, I may sleep off where you are talking. Mm. You carry your back, I'll be going. Because in my body clock, I, that's when I go to bed. But I wake up early to start my day. When do you leave your house to go to work? You can't leave any time you like. You have a meeting by 11. If you don't have schedule when to leave, you say, I'll leave on time. When, what time is on time? you find that you'll be shifting it by five minutes before you know it, it's 11 o'clock. Mm. So, but if you have a schedule, daily schedule, and you make yourself a slave to your schedule, I leave my house by 7 because I want to be at the office by 8. I leave the office by 7, I want to be at home by 8. And you follow those schedules. Mm. Then you have meetings that are scheduled. Mm. The meeting has beginning and end. They, wait, as I am now, I do not go to, I do not attend any meeting that has no agenda. Mm. 
If I come to meet that agenda, I go. I leave. Because a meeting without an agenda will drag for a long time and you go around in circles. You're not too much. How do you manage that? I don't know if you have heard this phrase that people say in Nigerian time. How do you manage that Nigerian time? I don't want to hear it. That people... I don't want to hear it. I don't manage it. I don't accept it. I don't live by it. There's no like Nigerian... Nigerian time. Time is of God. Nigerian time means that you may miss your destiny. Don't do that. If you do Nigerian time, nobody guarantees your future. You may miss out in this life. God is time conscious. Don't follow that at all. I have an internal clock that ticks within me. I have an internal clock. I don't know how, but it's activated. If I'm late, I feel sad. This meeting started by 11. We're here by before 9. Two hours rehearsing. Of course, we didn't do everything perfectly, but at least two hours before. The possibility of coming late today did not exist. I told my staff, everybody be here by night. They were. They were here before me. I was the last person because I brought somebody with me and so on. So what about is that we don't believe in Nigeria time. Before 11, meeting by 11, by, by 10, 20 minutes to 11, most of the people that attended eventually were here, seated there. The ones that were running late, by 10, 23, one of our staff, one of our board members sent a note, I'm running late. The meeting is by 11. By 10.23, she sent a note. 10.23. I told her, why don't you join online and keep coming? And she made a lot of difference by coming here today. Time. If you miss time, you've missed your destiny. Your time is your life. If you are killing time, you are committing suicide. What you do with time is what you've done with your life. Sometimes, sometimes it's even the organizers. Sometimes the organizers of your particular event or sure. program, yes. they will say time 12, 12 sure. noon. Sure. Before you know it, people, you make it to that 12 noon. Sure. And when you get there, the organizers are still, they are still even arranging or trying to put up the if you, before you know it, 2 p.m. If you know your, if you, if you have a plan, so if you have a plan mm. and you plan your life, when it's time to go, you go. But if you feel obligated to stay there from 12 to 5, mm. it means you too, you don't have a plan. <laughs> Look, think about it. So you can leave the event. This meeting we had, yeah. if we drag down, most people will carry their bag and leave. They have other things. They will not apologize to you. They are looking at the time. Two hours after, you are still talking. They will stand up in the midst of the meeting and be going. Why? Do you know they plan their day? Three o'clock and here. Four. They are not perfect. You can't have a meeting that starts by 11 and by 3. You say it's board meeting. You are still talking. Except, of course, you've agreed. People, people have other things planned. So if you go, I've, I've had meetings that was supposed to start by 12, by 3, they're still talking. Those that came by 12, who knew where they were going? By 3, they shook our hand. They said, sir, we have to go because there are other things. <laughs> they left. No, no apologies because they're they going somewhere. Go ahead. So now procrastination often hinders people when it comes to progress. Yes. People can write their plans, write their goals and what they need to do, but they keep procrastinating how to sure. to always to grab sure. Now, how can people employ or overcome procrastination and stay motivated throughout what they're doing? It's, it's a great question. The question is, uh, why do people procrastinate? Yes. Many reasons. But the primary reason people procrastinate is lack of courage. Lack of courage. Yeah, because they are afraid of the consequences of their action. So they keep delaying. You need to call somebody. You don't want to call the person. You are procrastinating. Do you know why? why? You are afraid of calling the person. Because you don't know what will come out of the call. Why do you procrastinate reaching your landlord until they reach you? You are afraid. You are owing. You have not paid your rent. You are afraid of the con you are afraid of what the landlord will do. What I mean by that is that the primary reason people procrastinate is that they are afraid of the consequences of their action. So they keep delaying it because they don't want to face the consequence. But the moment you have courage, procrastination will become less in your life. And then the moment you have schedules, I must do this by this time, do this by this time, it will also become less. Because if you don't do this, you can't do this. So you have, to, you have to learn to bite the bullet, eat the biggest frog, and keep on with your life. That's number one, courage. Sure. That's the primary reason. That's the primary reason. Yes. The, primary reason. the other thing could be lack of schedules. I mentioned lack of schedules. You don't have time. You don't have a plan. You know, when you look at the consequences, consider the consequences of your procrastination to motivate you not to procrastinate. Yeah, but, but sometimes, you know, they don't necessarily because they want to cause something because you know. I didn't say cause. I gave, I gave an it. I yeah. said the reason... People procrastinate is that they are afraid of the consequences of the action they need to take. Anything. Anything. Procrastinate means I need to do something, I'm delaying. The reason they're delaying is that they're afraid of the consequence of their action. It could be good consequence. It doesn't matter. It means that you're afraid of risk because actions have risk. 
Give an example of procrastination. Like someone wants to, uh, you need to go to a particular place and you need to do something. Like, like what? Will bring money for you. The people okay. don't, pro people don't procrastinate from where we bring them money. They go, they rush towards it. <laughs> they rush, they rush towards the body. That's the people don't procrastinate. <laughs> come, 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 come. That's what they, do. <laughs> they don't. Believe me, people do not procrastinate to go shopping. No, they don't. People procrastinate. They need to make a phone call that they don't they are dreading that call. People procrastinate, they need to stand up and start doing an assignment that is due. Eh, they don't know how to do that assignment. And they have, they think they don't know what to do, so they procrastinate. Okay. Yes. And they're not knowing what to do. Here. Yes, yes. But the only way to know what to do is to start doing it. You now learn what you don't know to do. And they start asking, this is a mindset. The moment you become a go-getter that says, anything I don't know, I'll research it. You also deal with that. Now, when it comes to your potential, are there, are there ways you can help people to be able to build their potential so that they can be able to achieve a particular goals or plan? Because sometimes, like you were, we were discussing earlier, you talked about capacity. Um, that is the reason why people don't achieve a particular goal. How can people go about building their, their potential and their capacity to fulfill their goal? The primary way to build capacity is education. Learn. Lack of capacity means lack of knowledge. You are as good as what you know. You are as you, are, you can only do what you know. Mm. So, if you want to learn how to drive a car, the only way to build capacity, go and learn how to drive a car. Go to driving school. The moment you go to driving school, you are not a driver yet, but you, have start, you know the skills, you start driving. The longer you drive, the more you learn. So, if you want to develop potential, apply yourself to life. Go to school, learn skills, and practice what you learn. You go. Now people sometimes people need resilience when you come when they when they meet challenges. Mm -hmm. What are the mindset shifts you can describe that you can be able to help someone to build resilience? When the, it comes the, to this mindset shift you need to make to become resilient is to know that if you keep on doing you, you become that practice the right practice makes perfect. There is nothing you cannot resolve if you stay with it. And that you never know what to give up when you give up. Therefore, never give up. You never know what to give up when you give up. Therefore, never give up. Keep at it. You cannot grow except to keep at it. And then, finally, pressure makes a man. There's no way to grow in life without pressure. People who avoid pressure, they postpone their future and their destiny. Postpone their future and their destiny. Pressure is what makes life. Every person you admire, who you think is strong, is strong because of what they've been through, not because of what they've not been through. So whatever you're avoiding, you're postponing your future. Bite the bullet. Accept the responsibility. You can't drive except you drive. But when you drive a car, the car will first drive you before you can drive the car. When the car is driving you, don't give up. Just stay the car, I will drive you one day. But if you give up driving because the car is driving you, you'll never drive. You gave up because of pressure. The pressure and pressure death of life. You're no longer in the equation of life. So, it's not easier for anybody. People are not better because they are better. They are better because they are doing more. At some point in basketball history, Michael Jordan had the highest number of free throws. At the same time, he had the highest number of misses. Wow. Why? That means he tried the most, missed the most, and was the most. That's it. Statistics. Give up. To increase your success rate, somebody says increase your failure rate. The more you fail, the more you succeed. There's no success without failure. People that are looking to be perfect, to do it right all the time, you're not part of the Godhead. It's not possible. You can't do that. If you're going to do it right all the time, you're going to do very few things in this life. Very few things. Wow. Yes. If you're going to do stuff, you're going to do stuff. If you want to drive, you have to learn how to drive. It's going to go like this. But if you want to drive perfectly, you never drive. That is it. Now, sometimes when people want to set goals, they don't set uh, realistic goals. So sure. how can you differentiate the clear path difference between setting goals that are realistic and then just because and then setting goals because you are just trying to be very ambitious that you want to go big? I have said to you that there are fundamental and basic questions you need to ask and answer. Why am I here? Sometimes people will say, because of faith, I believe. God says you can do everything through Christ that strengthens me. Okay. You know you don't have money to, you know you don't have uh, two million to buy something. Maybe what you what you have been having so far has been 100,000. But you suddenly say, no, I'm going to do something of five million. 
So what is the clear difference between setting the realistic goal rather than you saying, you know what I've been having so far is 100,000. Why don't you say, okay, what I, well, I want to do something of 200,000 or 300,000? You, you, you don't need to struggle. The person will fall flat on their face and they will learn. Why, why are you struggling with that? They have 100,000, they want to do 20 million. Mm. Leave them now. Let them do it. If they didn't do it, they'll learn. Yes. Why are you struggling with that? I'm saying that that thing you're saying that looks impossible to one is possible to another. Okay. Yes. Somebody will do the same thing and get the same get results. Somebody will do it because the first person is actually in faith. The second person is just ambition. Copying somebody. But don't worry about that. They will self-correct themselves. <laughs> they will crash their faith. They will correct. You don't need to be eventually do a strong faith. I don't, you just, don't worry about that. <laughs> you know, people will just say I have faith. And when they, when they, when they somebody, they, look, somebody says, I'm ready for marriage. You say, no, you're not. You say, I'm ready. You let them now. Why are you strong? Why do you want to argue with them? They will marry. Give them time. They'll come back to you. You say, why are you struggling with them? Somebody, he says, do this. Say, no, I'm ready. You don't struggle. You don't, you'll be, you're wasting your life. Say, you yeah, are ready. Be going. Marry. Yes. So, who to understand the difference between audacious goals and realistic goals? The, the, the difference is result. There's no other difference. Audacious goals will lead to results. All realistic goals, which look ambitious, will lead to all results. The difference is result. Now, you would discuss about this and we talk about failures. Sure. Could it be because you have unresolved? Is it because you fail? Because normally we will be saying now that even if you fail, you continue or you don't give up. Is it because your goal was audacious? You fail, you continue on it so that you achieve it. Or because the difference, unrealistic. the difference is clearer than you think, but it's not something to be explained. If a man is prepared for something, he's prepared. If you're not prepared, you're not prepared. Yes. To view this place. The people that built this place, they, they rented for many years. They could never have started by building this place. They did it. What it took to build this place, they got it by renting for years. So somebody says, I'm going to build you. Why are you fighting? Big building now. Build. Yes. There's no struggle. My, my son wakes up and says, Daddy, I can carry this suitcase. I say, No, yeah, fine. He says, I, I say, Go ahead, carry it. Why will I? I'll sit down. You carry it. If you try, try. He didn't carry it. Is it audacious or realistic? You have five years, you want to carry a suitcase, you can carry at 15, 17. I will sit down. Why would I be arguing with you? You try, you will fall. You, I will say, when you are tired, we'll be going home. <laughs> you don't need to stay there and be lecturing the person. You are wasting your time. Somebody is five years, say you carry the suitcase. He say, no, you don't need to struggle. This suitcase, if you keep eating and growing, you will carry it without prayer point. You, you don't need to pray. You don't need to struggle. Yes, one day, you just can't. Yes. He said, no, no, I must fix. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Why do I want to analyze that? I don't want to analyze. He will try. Four years. Mm. Suitcase. He cannot do it. Not because it's impossible. Mm. Is it impossible to carry a suitcase? Of course not. It's not impossible. A 70 year old will carry 20 year old, 25 year old. It only looks impossible to the four year old because he has not paid the price to become the person that can carry it. It's only a matter of time. It's not a prayer point. Have you had a personal experience of you trying to do something that you don't have the capacity to do? You failed on it, you realized that you had you, it's well because you didn't have the capacity. I don't know if I've had experience. I know that in my experience in life, what I have had is that when I make plans, God will say, inside those plans you've made, you added your own. And time will show you that that's just you added. Yes, you added your own things. God, I, the first time I took an international mission trip, 1997, go to, go to South Africa through London. You can go there. You say, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that. The things that were not God's plan didn't come to pass. Is there anything like you added your own? There is. Added your own means that you are led by ambition. <laughs> yes, I'm saying... I don't and, have dominion. It's not ambition. No. Dominion is according to your ability. Everybody does not have the same ability to exercise dominion. He says he gave them gifts according to their several abilities. To one, five, to one, two, to one, one. Mm, yes. The person that received one cannot do five. He can end up with five later on, but he cannot start with five. He has one. But if the one that has one wants to do five, it's ambition. Yes, it's very simple. You have one. And he gave you one. Not that, not that it's a, a, a figment of imagination. He gave you one. He didn't give you five. So, 
People have several ability. But notice that 5 became 10. 10 will become 20. So it means that 1 becomes 2. 2 becomes 4. 4 becomes 8. That means the one that has 1 doing 8 was only a matter of time. He will exceed the one that is 5 if he does nothing. But to try to do 5 at the beginning when you have 1, it's ambition. It's very simple. It's not complex. I say that it's not. It's easier. It's not easy to explain, but I know what I'm saying. Well, how do you describe that the, that portion of scripture that says that he gave each and every one of them the talent, but others make use of theirs? And the person that was given the smallest one went and buried his own rather than yes. bringing, bringing out something out of it. The lesson there is that you can only multiply what you use. Whatever you have mm. is the size of what you have is not as important as using what you have. You have small strength. Don't worry about the size. Just be using the strength to grow. But to not balance and say that when I have big strength, I will start. Mm. You have buried your strength. You are not going anywhere. Mm. So what he's saying is that use what I gave you to get what you want. But don't bury it by not using it because if you don't use it, it will, it will go back. The more you use something, the more it grows. To multiply something, use it. Except a cone of wheat falls into the ground and dies. It's alone. But if it dies, bring it forth. Harvest much fruit. So if you want to multiply what you have, where you start life is not as important as where you end. Where you start life is, not, is given to you by life and God. Where you end life is your gift back to God. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay, now as you're running up, financial planning is quite very important sure. when it comes to setting up. Sure. Life. So how can people go about setting up and planning their financial life in order to ensure that whatever they are doing with their finances tallies with their goals and their plans and so that they don't use it? I do not want you to misunderstand the way life works. Mm. There is a proper way to do everything, even financial planning. Mm. There are basic fundamental principles of applying. First of all, you must have a job. There's no planning without a job. You can't plan financially with another person's money. It's your own. So you have to have a job. When you have a job, financial plan starts with understanding money and the nature of money. The nature of money is that never spend what you don't have and never spend all that you have. Mm. Whatever you earn, you must take away some and keep. It's not how much you earn that matters. It's the fact that a percentage of what you earn, you must save. Mm. it's from your savings you start to plan to say what can I do with it what I'm saying is that no matter where you are in life you earn only 10,000 a month don't spend 10,000 spend only 8 you say but it's not enough but you started with 0 you didn't die you spend 8 you will not die but mindset people say no 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 what I'm saying in fact therefore is that don't spend all that you have you must save some you must understand the nature of money Money is attracted by your behavior and attitude. And it's repelled by your behavior and attitude. Explain that. It means that if you are desperate for money to run from you, if you calm down, it will come to you. Huh. If you go to a negotiation and people are talking, he said, I will do it for this. So he said, you probably argue, this, that. He said, if, it's, if I do it for this, it will not work. Being desperate, he said, just anyhow, I'll do it. I, this work, I must do it. They, you even know that this money cannot get the work done. Mm. They're desperate. Mm. If you say, sir, the minimum it will cost you is this. You say, I don't have it. You say, sir, if you don't have it, let's wait till you have it. Mm. Because if you don't do it, it will not work. Mm. They're not desperate. They're calm. You've done your analysis. Mm. Some people are desperate. They just want to get the job at all costs. Because they don't plan to do the job. They're going to chop the money. If you want to say, so, somebody says, I want to buy this chair, 20,000. He said, I bought this chair. 17,000, transport, everything, or even 15. If I sell this year 20,000, this business cannot survive, sir. The minimum I will sell this year is 25. You say, let me get an example. When people print, mm. they give you the cost of printing 100,000 flyers. You'll be arguing with them. Some people say, bring it. Those people, they're going to print 85 for you. <laughs> you know why? They are not going to count it. Mm. They will just bring 85. They know that to do 100,000, the person that plans to do the job with the right paper has told you that the minimum cost is this. I work with printers. If you keep arguing, you will fall into the hand of the wrong printer. Mm. 
that printer will use poor quality material. They will now do Speedmaster and say it's um, DI. Do you know how you know it's not DI? After two days, they've not come back to you. The DI is ours. Somebody says he's doing DI. Three days is still working. He said, What kind of DI takes three days? It's not DI. He's doing Speedmaster. Do you know why? He gave you a ridiculous price. You agree? Somebody says one million. He says, Don't worry, I will do it for 450. He said, Is it DI? He said, It's DI now. 450. Mm. It's not 450. So. <laughs> that one million. Even that one letter may not get the job done. When you're desperate, you get in trouble. Mm. Sure. Mm. So as we are as we're rounding up now, we discussed initially when we started, we discussed we talked about uh, planning, but you spoke sure. briefly on it. Now I wanted to one one of the final questions should be how can I plan my life? I wanted to come back to it and just give a brief brief over around it. To plan your life. Yes. Several models. I use Benjamin Franklin's model. It's like a pyramid. It's built on values. This, that value means that why do you do what you do? What's your motive? The next thing to ask yourself, what's my global purpose? It means, why do I exist? Why did God make me? If you don't know that, you can't plan your life. You can plan a life, but not your life. After that is, what is your plan for fulfilling the purpose of your life? After that, you're not dealing with resources. What's your long-term plan? Where would you be in 25 years? After that, you deal with midterm. Where will you be in the next five, five years? Then you now deal with short-term plans. In the next one to 12 months, mm. what should you be doing? And then the daily task. What do I need to do every day that will ensure that at the end of my life, I fulfill my... 25 years plan. Or 100 years plan. 100 years plan. That's your daily task. Must touch every aspect of your life. But what's important is that it's made up of routines and schedules. Mm. What I'm trying to say is that for a man to live a life of impact the next 25 years, mm. the key is what he's doing. If you miss the day, mm. you miss the 25 years. Wow. Thank you very much. Wow, wow. So, okay, what time? What's the, what the final word you have to plan you have to ask what you have to share? The final thing I would say mm. is that time is everything. Time is everything. If you manage your time, you manage your life. What you do with your time is what you've done with your life. Life planning is trying to maximize your life, your timeline, what happens between your birth and your death. To maximize your life, you have to find out why you were born. To find out why you were born is a process. But if you embark on that process by seeking God, you find out. Once you find out, there are, there are, there are four or five things you must do with purpose. Because the reason you're born is purpose. Mm. Purpose is the reason something is done. The reason something is created. The reason something exists. Mm. The purpose of your life is the reason God did you. The reason God created you. The reason you exist. What do you do with purpose? Four or five things. Number one, you must find purpose. Find. Number two, you must follow purpose. Number three, you must fulfill purpose. Number four, you must finish purpose. That's what I'm going to be saying. You must find purpose. You must follow purpose. You must focus on purpose. You must fulfill purpose. You must finish purpose. Five of them. Find purpose. Follow purpose. Focus on purpose. Fulfill purpose. Finish purpose. So, the purpose of your life is where you are born. Until you find purpose, the purpose of life is to find purpose. The moment you find purpose, the purpose of your life is to fulfill purpose. And finish it. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. But, uh, can you just finally tell your why your father can reach out to you? My name is John Chibos and Delamai. You can reach me by email jcene -E at hotmail.com or jcene1 -E at gmail.com. They will share. If you look at the screen, you see all our social handles. Follow them. I look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Bye. So that is it, guys. We've heard from our very powerful guest here, John C. Enelama, on life planning. I believe this will set you on the right path to be able to plan your life. This is a new year. This is 2024. So I believe this can give you a foundation for you to be able to put down your life together. If you're confused of this, in the state you are now, what you need to do, I think this video will give you the guidance on what you need to do. So if this is your first time of coming to this channel, do it to hit the subscribe button. Like this video. Share it with those that you need to share it with. And don't forget to turn on post notification so that whenever we upload new videos, you'll be one of the first to get notified. My name is Benzik, and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.